What's up, guys? My name is Cody Luongo, and welcome to the Reload Your Home for Competitive Counter-Strike. Uh, it's been two weeks since we've been here. We're here from the UGC Studios live. we got the Twitch chat up, so fire some questions. Talk to us. We're live here with our guest today. Let's go ahead and bring him in right off the bat. It's Eric DeBears Stromberg, baby. Let's see him. Ooh, I get so hyped up that uh. the intro every time. It's on one of my old favorite maps, Nuke. The music, you know, Rage Against the Machine. And then you saw that one, one terrorist guy look at that flashbang, like, ah, oh, as it blows up in front of his eyes. Great. I love, I love it. It pumps me up. That's it pumps way. me up. I want to start my day to that intro every morning. I want that as my alarm. All right. <laughs> just put it as my alarm. That's right. I like a projector on the screen. Brightens up your room. Oh, boy. Counter-Strike. Mm, I love the smell of gunpowder in the morning. So good. <laughs> Only if they could implement smells in video. Yes. Then it would be above smell the next vision. level. But until then, I want to smell the nuclear radiation coming from Nuke. Okay? I want to smell that. I want to know that I'm in the game. I like but maybe one day when technology gets there. Smell of vision. You know, you know, it would be even better just to one up this this brilliant, already brilliant idea. What if we had actual terrorists and counter terrorists fighting in your bedroom there as part of the? So you know, you get your door kicked in, flash bang to wake up, a couple CZs shooting. That's gonna wake you up. That's gonna kickstart you. I mean. It not only wakes me up, but it might make me shit the bed when I see a bunch <laughs> of people running in with guns and flashbangs. So it'll definitely, uh, you don't need coffee for that kind of situation. So, you know, you got to take the positives. I don't, I don't think, I, yeah, I don't think you're, I wonder, that's going to set the tone for the day in, in one way or another. I don't <laughs> know if it's good or, or what. It's gonna, everything's going to be very quiet as soon as after that happens, you know? Right. How you been, buddy? How's Thanksgiving? Well, Tell me. Thanksgiving was great. What'd you eat? Spent the time with a girlfriend, you oh, know. Oh, you know, have some good food. Uh, we made some Brussels sprouts, Ooh. oven roasted. All right, Homemade. with some balsamic vinaigrette, you know, on top of it. Reduced mm. it in some garlic. It was great. It was fantastic. Reduce. Make make vegetables taste great. It's all about baking them in olive oil and that good stuff. Little tips for you youngins out there who don't eat their broccoli or, or Brussels sprouts. Okay. You know, you can make it put taste some good. olive oil in it, put it in the oven for 20 minutes. All right. It's delicious. Make it's not veggies just great it's again. It's healthy. It's healthy. Okay. Stop eating Pringles and Pizza Hut every day. <laughs> all right. It's going to catch up to you. I promise. I tried that last. I tried that at the energy house two months ago. And I think I gained 20 pounds because my body can't handle it. It'll catch up to you. I promise. It does. It seems like an innocent little you know, baked Pringle. It's so small. You want to just sometimes I, you know, I eat like seven of them at a time, and it's just like, it's, you know, picks no. it snowballs from there. Because then you know, I just do mounds of the, you know, like the crushed the slippery chips. slope. It, it slippery. goes down. You go down fast. It goes down. You know, you're 500 calories deep in Pringles. You're like, that's not a big deal. But on top of everything else, it adds up. Okay, go straight to your hips, right to your thighs. You look like a pear. <laughs> I look those, at, that's what I think about every time I look in the mirror. Those numbers add up. Uh, absolutely. I will say, though, I'm glad you had a good Thanksgiving. I had a great Thanksgiving. How about yours? My family. You know, I'm, I'm so rude sometimes. I'm sorry I didn't ask you how's your Thanksgiving. You ask me questions, but I don't ask you back. <laughs> Cody, how was your Thanksgiving, dog? It was, it was fantastic. I was with the family. I was in Connecticut where, where I was brought up. And, you know, get the grandma and the uncle there with some homemade uh, sweet potatoes, call them candy yams, little Ooh, baked marshmallows on them. Have you ever had a baked marshmallow Ooh, on them? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, my. those are pretty good. Wow. Magnificent. Mm. Only what one downside. You? Did you make anything? Did you I didn't, anything? Well, I, did, I didn't make anything. So the only downfall about Thanksgiving was that I had to go and get my own turkey. You know, it was a total surprise to me. I come into the house, mom says, yeah, all right, you, you got to get the turkey. So, all right, uh -oh. so. That's a lot of pressure. The turkey? Right, a lot. A you lot. in charge of the turkey. <laughs> the pinnacle That's... of Thanksgiving yeah, looks is in my you. hands. In my Even hands. if you didn't cook it, I'd still blame you if it was bad. This is the That's first for me. I'm, tw I'm 25 years young. First turkey I've ever had the responsibility of getting. So Thanksgiving is now in my out. hands. It's in the palm of my hands. So I had to go, you know, I walked to the, the local turkey ranch, obviously. You know, walk, turkey stroll ranch, in, okay. take around the corner. I see five turkeys right there Ooh. in front of me. Seem like they're guarding some sort of site. So what I do is so it's a live to turkey. five of them, 
live and alive. So I reach into my back pocket and I throw a smoke grenade over the top. Oh, you <laughs> pop flash that. off the corner. <laughs> CZ comes out. Ta, 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 ta. Five taps, five turkeys. Thanksgiving is saved, baby. And then a mild toss on top of it <laughs> to cook it and roast it. That's what you do, baby. The That's perfect ridiculous. Thanksgiving story. So wait, did you actually go to a turkey farm and, and pick a live turkey? No, I didn't. Actually. Is that I completely fabricated all of that? But I, I was I was pretty excited. I caught his turkey farms <laughs> over in Connecticut. I, tur- I've never seen ranches. one before. There would be a, a turkey cool ranch. Sorry, not a farm. Yeah, yeah. It's I good. don't know if there's actual. I'm, I'm sure they have that. I'm sure they have turkey ranches. The free range roam turkey. You buy it Whole Foods probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eighty yeah. dollars more than a normal turkey. They probably have like names <laughs> and backgrounds and history and you know like a, they come with You're resumes. You're a guy named Billy. <laughs> Billy was a great turkey pet. He lived for ten years. Four years of sales experience. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> they only come with resumes. Time. No GMOs added. Nothing. <laughs> Ridiculous. Don't name your food and then eat them. That's ridiculous. It's yeah. That would be a little nuts. Moving into You're humanizing. Uh, yeah, it's, it's brutal. It's absolutely brutal. Yeah. So moving on to something more relevant to, I guess, the, the idea of a podcast is Counter Strike, right? As we like to, you know. But I, I love the opening banter. It's part of the. It's warming experience. up. We're warming up to it. I know. So might know? as well do some stretches. It's not uh. just about CS. It's about human beings. We're humans, right? <laughs> That's right. Talk it out. That's the idea. That's the idea. So obviously, there is a slew of tournaments happening right now. Um, and we'll get we'll get to many of those. We have obviously Supernova and Malta, ECS wrapped up last week. Um, it's been two weeks since we've done the show, obviously. So there's a lot that's happened. Dreamhack uh, in Atlanta, uh, EC, uh, ESL Pro League happening next week, and also Dreamhack Winter. Um, but to start things off, we'll talk about a couple of the transfers of the week that we missed. Um, not necessarily a, a transfer, but more. Uh, the confirming of Cooper going over to United and be finally being implemented in that roster. Dazzle was confirmed as being benched on, by United on Thursday. So initially it was believed That's that... That's surprising. Do you think so? Uh, well, I mean, if you go stats-wise, he's doing pretty well. So I don't know. Um, it has to be more of an internal uh, situation. I don't know about it, if it's personality or maybe with Cooper coming on, Relix was doing really well. At, uh, it was it's just a weird situation in, in general because Cooper was supposed to play for United right away. Yeah, uh, that's what Dazzle said, I think, in his twit longer. Um, but with the backlash and all the drama happening with Swell Patrol, and Cooper, I think Cooper decided he's going to finish the season out with Swell Patrol and then go to E United, and. Um, yeah, and now it's creating this weird thing because in that time, Relics had to cover for Cooper. And so now Relics is on the team when he was originally going um, to get cut right. or get replaced. Mm-hmm. And now Dazzle's the one who's going to get benched and cut. So very confusing on what's going on in the United camp. Either way, um, they still have a really solid team, especially with Cooper coming on. Uh, but with Dazzle and Relics, um, I don't know. I don't know what to think on uh, how that will work out in the long run. They're both uh, Relics and Dazzle, pretty good players. But statistically speaking, I think Dazzle was uh, one of the better players on the team. Yeah, I think it, it, it is kind of an interesting play. And initially it was believed that Relics was going to be on the chopping block, so to speak. And then we thought that Cooper would be at uh, I Am Chicago. Wasn't there. I'm at DreamHack Atlanta hoping to see Cooper not there either. Um, but, uh, yeah, it should be an interesting to see kind of how United develops now, especially now that they have Finesse and now Cooper. But I didn't know that he actually went on to, to complete the season with Swole Patrol. How'd they end up doing? Do you know? Um, you know what? I, I think it's, I think it's still going on to be honest. I'm not hundred percent sure on Swole Patrol. Um, but they were doing pretty decent, uh, for a while and then Cooper, you know, had that whole fiasco, and right. uh, you know, I'm not sure what how Soul Patrol is doing. It feels like there's so many tournaments have been, the playoffs been dragged out for so long. Uh, it's it's just hard to keep up with some of these uh, teams that aren't, you know, a professional team yet. Even though Soul Patrol is on the verge of probably getting professional, they have good players. 
I think they're I think they're going to have a big ramp up boost. Um, Zelsis, you know, I just this is pretty much just gossip talk, so don't take anything yeah. too seriously. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zelsis on a stream, you know, was hinting at you know some of the you know one of the EU nine players, um, you know, Dazzle playing for Soul Patrol as well. So. Who knows what kind uh, of mix that'd be an interesting shuffle move. this could bring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that'd be cool. That could help it. And so who knows? I guess well, who knows what's going to happen. That'd be an interesting little flip. That's like when we talked about, uh, oh, dear God, what's his name? I'm forgetting. Snacks going back to. Mm. Um, He's getting cut from Mouse Sports pretty much. And yeah. then Stiko going right back to Mouse Sports mm-hmm. after, I don't know, like six or seven months of being on Cloud9. Yeah. Um. Mouse Sports seems to be doing okay. Uh, actually, I've watched a couple of matches, and Stiko uh, has been doing pretty well on the fragging uh, part. I think he gained his confidence in his time being off, and then Mouse Sports wanted him back. I think that does really good for a person's mentality. Yeah. Is that just enables you and fills you with that confidence. Hey, these guys need me. They want me. They know that I'm part of their success, and that will make a person play a lot better. You know, before that, he was getting Definitely. criticized. Cut Stiko, cut Stiko. Mm-hmm. And he's playing worse and worse and worse. But now he's, you know, he's doing, he's fragging well. Uh, you know, they're winning some matches here and there. And not too much success at ECS, but, you know, there's, there's a lot of good teams. So it's it's hard to just, you know, completely toss them out of the top 10. I, I still think they're a good top 10. Yeah, no Probably doubt. top 7, 16 for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no doubt. And to your point, yeah, when you feel wanted, and that kind of goes across like everything in life. When when you're wanted, it makes you mm-hmm. feel good. You know, it makes you feel. Sexy. I know you put get a little pep in your yeah. step. You're like walking along, you're saying hi to every every woman you see in the street. Like, hey, how's it going? I, I like do your that hat. anyway. Yeah. That's it. You just sprinkle it. You sprinkle. It. You're not too aggressive. I like your hat. Nice hair. Oh, what kind of shoes are those? So they kind of like, wait a minute. He's not just talking about my TNA. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> advice for you guys out there: don't go ham. Sprinkle, yeah. sprinkle the compliments. Gentle, right? sprinkle very it. gentle touch. Yeah. You're seasoning the ham. You want some salt on there, but not too much, okay? Seasoning a honey. ham. I'm taking that home. Have a little honey on there. Honey, honey baked <laughs> ham. Mm, mm. Ooh, it does sound good. It does sound good. Bring, <laughs> bring me all those. Um, yeah, so Dazzle off of United. And also, this, this happened quite some time ago. I think it was on the 17th. If I'm not mistaken, but uh, Kyushima signs to Cloud mm. Nine. Uh, mm. Interesting move. Yeah, that's a yeah, very interesting. Uh, I think a lot of people are surprised, even though his name was being mentioned a lot during the process of Cloud Nine trying to find uh, a new player. And you know, it's a kind of a mixed feeling for me personally. I think Kyushima is a good player. Uh, he has good skills, mechanics, and good in game sense but the reason why he was cut from his other teams even though he's doing well like a phase or whatnot was his commitment uh problems you know he i I don't know if he's still dating anyone or anything but at the time with phase he was currently seeing a person and just the rumors you know behind the scenes that uh he wasn't as committed as you have to be on a pro level and eventually got pushed out regardless of performing well you still have to work, play with the team. And so that's going to draw some questions in the future if he can continue his, I guess, composure and focus and not kind of slack off yeah. uh, that we've seen him do in the past. And the other part is kind of like, yeah, it's like, you know, I see Cloud9 as a North American team, and now they're bringing over Europeans, which I'm not going to harp on Europeans or anything like that. Obviously, they bring them on because uh, – you know, there's some good players out there, but I think organizations like a Cloud9 or maybe even Complexity should start looking at, you know, teams or players from uh, the 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 league right below um, Pro League or whatnot, like Mountain Dew League or Advanced right. or whatever. There are a lot of good players that are sure. not known. You just have to, you know, you have to do the homework and research to actually find these players. And I'd rather prefer something like that than bring over someone, you know, from another country, just in the fact, because, um, you know, it, it's just, I, I would like, it encourages our country to do a little better, you know, up, yeah. you know, 
when you start mixing in a lot of uh, different countries, it's just, it's, I mean, it's hard to explain, but the mentality is just, I would like to, you know, have them look more into our roots and then yeah. try to find someone that's coming up, whether it's a young person or old person, not throwing anything out there, but <laughs> sprinkle it on, baby. I'm playing a lot. But anyways, point being, do some research. Don't just pick up the next free agent that HLTV is gossiping about all the time. Okay, just try to mix it up. Try to find something different. Bears, if you went on to compete professionally again, I don't know if I can continue doing the reload without you. We can. I'm too heartbroken. No, we can. Listen, I'll make wounded, time. Okay. Wounded animal. I will, I will make time. All right. I I don't just forget. I don't just drop and forget. Okay. I keep good it going. Man. Keep it going. It's good qualities. I like that. But uh, yeah, I kind of I got I got mixed feelings about it as well in terms of like the whole you know obviously Cloud Nine is like this iconic North American roster, um, and we have a completely different team than we did a year ago. Um, just about yeah. for the when they won the U League Boston Major, um, like if they can keep it in a in a squad, I feel like it's just going to be better for the organization as a whole in terms of like promoting. Yeah. yeah, like you said, promoting. The, the scene here in North America. But, like, I don't really know the proper option just because you want to get the best possible players on your team, right? And I don't know if there's a yeah. be better player than Kishima out there. I'm sure there is. That's possibly undiscovered. But, you know, it's a bit of a slippery slope, right? Yeah, it's a slippery slope because you never know. Maybe he'll do amazing and see now be on a whole other level. Or it could be another flop. I mean, those are really... The two things that can happen and you know it, cs is a team game so sometimes grabbing that big name is not the best for the organization and i'd say one of the best examples of that is ldlc mm -hmm. yeah. i mean other than um in north america at least other than amanek and deva duvek a lot of these players um not as known over here as in europe you know like an alex or a toino uh, they're more popular i'd say over in europe but it's kind of, they kind of seem like no-namers, uh, you know, compared to other big star names, and they're doing extremely, extremely well. They have great teamwork. Mm -hmm. AIM's been on point for almost all the matches I've seen of them. I've seen like four or five in the last couple of weeks or last month of them, and they've, you know, they've always impressed me, hanging with teams like Astralis, even yeah. beating them online, which is, uh, you know, pretty impressive in itself, especially for a, a relatively new team. So that's a lot of potential. That's something I like to see. Uh, We're talking from... LDLC here, right? LDLC, yes. Yeah, they're looking LDLC. great. They're looking great. Looking fantastic. Yeah. And, uh, it's exciting to see a new team, uh, you know, other than the same top orgs that you always see. I like, mm -hmm. I like seeing emergence. I like seeing diversity and all that stuff. Definitely. So. The all-French I'm, I'm lineup. A big fan. I'm, a big, I'm a big fan of LDLC. Alex is he's not French, but he speaks French, or at least... His flag says he's from the UK, so I don't know if he was born in France and moved to the UK or, or what enough. his deal is. But it's French uh, in my I actually book. mentioned on Twitter. I mentioned on Twitter, does LDLC speak all French? And Maniac, when the analyst, uh, former pro player, mm -hmm. he said that yeah, they all speak French and that Alex is bilingual, and so it's wow. it's it's also pretty good that they all speak the same language as well because it's definitely you know high tense, high pressure situation. You need to, say something immediately without hesitation mm -hmm. and you know you can't have that at a pro level you can't have hesitation on a pro level yeah you can't afford that you can't afford that time that quarter fraction mm. of a second in your brain mm. even having to i imagine comprehend transferring a word in a language if that's the proper that way takes to say time. That. That takes it, time yeah and that's probably taken away from your game too you know for a second you're mm -hmm. like uh uh Eh, trying to get that that word less out. Focus, less oh, yeah. focus on the yeah. actual play and try to focus on words. So it's not easy. No, not at all, not at all. But that is interesting that they're all they're all speaking French. They're repping French. I love the French brand. We do have an LDLC clip later. No spoilers, but we will put that up there. Cause it's super <laughs> exciting. <laughs> um, so yeah, we uh, happened to with the little Thanksgiving break that we had, we missed. The ECS Season 6 Finals. Now, I, with the holidays going on and all the travel, didn't manage to catch an abundance of the tournament, but I did watch um, the Astralis MIBR game at the end, which was uh, an absolute freaking thriller. 
to say the least, right? It was bonkers. It was absolutely, absolutely bonkers. nuts. One of the games, I mean, I don't know. I want to say like one of the, the matches of the year, possibly. It was really exciting to watch nonetheless. Yeah, um, even, even though it was 1-2-0, the games were really close. Oh, and yeah. to be honest, I felt like MIBR was the better team that day. Really? But they, yeah, they did. I felt like they were the better team. Uh, at both games, they were up uh, on Astralis, like a good, good, good portion. And in oh, both yeah. teams, they lose. Oh, Hello. sorry. There we go. I saw Henry G. I was like, <laughs> do I have a window open somewhere? <laughs> but um, yeah, both games, Astralis came back against MIBR. That's MIBR what they almost do. had. That's what they do. And that's what makes them <laughs> such hard champions to play against yeah. because they always come back. And even you know, against teams like MIBR, they were up against Astralis. They were winning. They're about to win these maps, but somehow, some way, Astralis just pulls miracles and plays the right move every single step of the way. And they come back and they claw their way to uh, 2 0 victory. One being on OT. I think this was the map that was OT. No, it was Overpass. But this map was 16 right. 14, spoiler mm -hmm. alert. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's still just. It's insane in how good Astralis is and how good they are right now in the scene. And, but I think MIBR did play the better two games. They just kind of, you know, I don't like to say the word choke, but kind of choked it off a little bit. And you know what? As I say that MIBR was up, this map they weren't. Mm -hmm. Overpass they were. Right. And then, um, actually, I think MIBR made a run. Yeah, they, they went up to 14 and then just came back and... 16 14 yeah. final score for Astralis, and then it was 22 20. Yeah, I'm with you. This was an absolute dogfight of a match, which you love to see. You love to see a dogfight in any sport, any sporting match, whether you know physical or digital in the case of Counter Strike. Um, but man, Astralis, like I said, it's what they do. They bring these games back from seemingly impossible standpoints, and I guess. Uh, the gap was a, not as wide as it was in this in this bout between them and MIBR, but they have like this championship blood where they make it happen every time. They bring the games back from the dead. Like even in the grimmest situations, you think there's no freaking way Australis is going to win this. You just know yeah. that they are. They're going to do it. Yeah, uh, it's it's just kind of insane. They just they don't get nervous or something and. They don't doubt themselves, and they always, again, they always make the right move when they, like, if there's two possible moves to make, they make those, that move happen somehow almost every single time. It's what makes them so consistent, so good, and, uh, ugh, Strauss is just too good right now. Yeah. Everyone wants to see them lose because it's way too good. It's true, and it's, like, kind of mixed as well. It's like, I don't know, I hate, not really for, like, booing for a team, you know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't get off to that. I rather like support one side or the other. I, I guess because they do pull off some pretty amazing rounds, Astralis. Yeah, they, uh, eesh, they're too good, and too I think teams are kind of trying to. They're doing a little better, but they still seem so far ahead. Yeah. Of most teams, it's. Um, I think this Christmas break is going to be a, a lot of catching up from teams. Mm -hmm. uh, Astralis might, I mean, they might take it a little easier. Who knows? But um, I, I do feel like teams are going to have to put in a little extra work this Christmas uh, break for them to catch up to Astralis. So it's going to be the time. This Christmas break is going to be the time where Astralis is going to kind of lose a, a bit of their edge, I think. Yeah, you think so? I, I, yeah. I you know, yeah. that could be possible. It could be possible. Um, I will say, and again, we'll get to this a little bit later in the show, but I, I doubt they're going to slow up before the Pro League Finals, right? Just because of the situation of them being in, oh, in yeah. Denmark with the chance of oh. winning the Grand Slam. I mean, the narrative is absolutely... Really? That's, yeah, that's, that's the one ESL the one. for the Grand Slam in Denmark? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. You know what, to be honest? Oh. Shit, that's gonna be such a good series. That's gonna be such yeah. a good tournament, uh, just because of the hype and there's a lot of great teams there for uh, the EPL uh, Pro League Finals. Uh, it should be a good overall tournament. 
a lot of a lot of good stuff yeah yeah no that's gonna be a stellar one and the narrative around you can script a better story for astralis for this case you honestly yeah. couldn't We'll we'll get into that yeah, a little really bit later. Really show the pressure. Yeah, I'll show the pressure of them too. Oh yeah, yeah, and the crowd's gonna be on their side. Can you imagine a, an Astralis with home team home turf advantage? It's not even I fair. Could, it's not yeah, even right. fair. Like, what other teams do? might as well just what, not show what are you up. What do about that? <laughs> you get in their heads. You got to somehow just completely just outplay them. The yeah. Entire tournament. Good luck. Yeah, GGS. Uh, we'll look. We'll take a look a closer look at the teams in a bit. Um, but yeah, ECS. Overall, you know, kudos to Astralis. MIBR, though, seems like this, you know, they're finally starting to, to get into the form. You know, in my opinion, when I see MIBR, and it was more cemented after watching the the multiple bouts between them and Astralis, because they did beat them in the group stage, 2-1, I think. Yeah. Um, and then came so close to beating them, which would have been just an, an insane story in itself. But it feels like MIBR is this team that is like bound to blow up at some point, right? Would you agree with that or no? I mean, um, blow up as in doing really good or blow up as like a disaster? I, know, I blow up as, as in like, it's it's almost, it hurts to say it, as in say really good because that would mean that they would have to be consistently beating Astralis, but... This is going to be a top contender team, I feel, consistently at some point. When you look at the team, the experience, like everything on paper about these guys and kind of the progression they're showing, you would think that these guys are bound for some sort of greatness, right? Yeah. I mean, Fallen always had a pretty good system. I always admired Fallen, the way he handles his teams, the way that he brings uh, structured kind of a loose style to the game. And I think what's helping MIBR really well is that Yanko is taking a lot of pressure off Fallon, not just yeah. the in-game, but also to create some strats. Um, it, it's just, it makes it so much easier for, for Fallon. He can, he can focus more on opping. He can focus, uh, you know, a lot of other things other than the strat element as well. So, I think it's pretty good for them. Uh, Cold Zero has been playing really well again lately. Yeah. He's been he had a couple. Felt like he was kind of had a couple off months, especially when MIBR was kind of struggling. But at ECS, he showed a lot of old 2017 Cold Zero. You know, he was winning clutches, top right. fragging a lot more consistently, and he had a pretty overall good tournament. You love it's to see uh, it. you it's good, to and see I it. and and I think you're right that MIBR they just. Um, they, I mean, they got second place. They almost beat Astralis. If they can, they have a good formula going on. Uh, it's just whether or not, I guess, uh, I guess everyone's looking at Tark and Stewie. If they're able to play up to the level as a as a fallen or cold or even mm -hmm. fur sometimes fur, uh, he's been having health problems again, and so he hasn't been doing too hot lately. Mm -hmm. And again, he's going to be out for a whole month. I'm not even sure if he's going to Adenza. Um, I I don't know if they've confirmed that or not. That if he's because he said that he had to take a month off for oh, surgery. Geez. Yeah, that's not going to help. And that. I don't know if it was this month or after the EPL season, but I think he's. I I think they might have to use a ringer for EPL. I'm not sure yet. I guess we'll find out once it comes a little closer. That's definitely so that'd not be very help interesting. Case. Yeah. Oh, definitely not at all. Because who are they going to put? Who are they going to put to a ring for him? I mean, people are saying FNX and stuff like that, but the rumor is that FNX is going to join Luminosity. That's Ooh, the rumor right now. That FNX is going to make a comeback to Luminosity. That's kind of exciting. And that Yell, Yell is going to be cut, which, I mean, it makes sense on paper because Yell and Henny are both you know main offers, so it'd be kind of weird. So I don't know. That's going to be, uh, we'll see what's going to yeah, happen. It's a little tricky there. I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. Wrapping up uh, ECS season six finals. Just wanted to play this one play of the week. And we actually have two, but uh, yeah. kind of in course with what we were talking about. One of the most exciting moments, in my opinion, I'm sure many others, was uh, Tarek's overtime clutch ace. Let's roll it right now. 
absolutely does. 30 seconds remaining, still possible though. Players like Fur can shut these situations down very quickly, but Magus should confirm the round at this point. It's Tarek. Oh my goodness, finding all the headshots. Surely he doesn't have a chance here. He'll go for the plant. It's actually looking possible. He'll get it down here. It's up to Device to try and deny everything. Tarek could win the one versus four. He has a Molotov available to him. Device is low and he has to wait for his teammate. He's got to start moving though because he doesn't have information behind him. He's expecting it to be from the stairs, but now that flash comes out. Device trying to work back in has given away the fact that Zipix is coming from the front. And Tarek, oh! a one versus four! In double overtime, it's 2020! Oh my goodness, Tarek. It hasn't been his best tournament, but that might won't be one of the best rounds played so far. Unbelievable. Give that was amazing. I thought they were going wow. to win after that. I, I thought Emma Burns was going to take the map for sure. I mean, mm -hmm. you win a one on four situation against the best team in the world in OT in the finals. That should pump up your team beyond levels. I, I, I think they end up losing the next round after that yeah. in a really bad fashion. I, I think it was like the tables. pistols and it gave me, I think they lost the pistols and scouts and stuff like that after that. It's just, it was like the story of the tournament. Uh, MIBR lo losing to, to kind of four spies against Astralis. That was a big, tough one, the pill to swallow for them. But yeah, Tark, like, pretty amazing that that one four. I mean, he did everything right. And yeah. That meant an play. ace for him, too. He had a kill before that, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Mm. That was a, mm. oh yep. my God, that play had me jumping. And of course, you saw the crowd yeah. moving, too. That was fucking exciting. Yeah, that was hype. <laughs> that was pretty hype. That's, that's one of the, probably one of the best plays of the year so far. Yeah. Uh, it's up there. You know, top just the circumstances, sure, like you said, just the circumstances against you're playing against Astralis, you're in the grand finals. It's double. This is to clutch the double overtime scenario. Like, again, just you couldn't script it better for Tarek. He had to be feeling like mm. a, a boss at that moment. He was pretty good. He was pretty good. Pretty solid. Hopefully, they could find more of that consistency for MIBR, though. Yeah, we're hoping for better days for them overall, for sure. Um, uh, keeping again in course with the play of the week vibe we have today. Today's a very special day in mm. Counter Strike history. Mm. Do you know why? Oh, you know um, I think I might have an idea, but <laughs> would you surprise? You read the rundown. Surprise. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> you little sneak peek. Four four years ago, on this day, we saw a play in a Fnatic versus LDLC match, which was forever known after as the Olaf boost and this is kind of a long clip it's about two and a half minutes but let's roll it you're gonna watch all of it and you're gonna see kind of the excitement behind this clip all of my still still waiting the patience game coming out. i can spot them coming out of squeak door as well he's here he sees them down there straight headshot they have no idea Smith's looking confused and dazed, and it's going to be a follow-up headshot on a voice though. You've got to be kidding me. Takes down Kirishima as well. Two frags there. Fnatic, that is a way back in, and that's definitely a huge confidence boost now for them, especially when they need it. But look, it's, a, it's actually a double. It's teamwork. It's real teamwork <laughs> that allows for this. It's a double. It's a triple man boost. <laughs> this is so cheeky. Oh, it's hard not to love what Fnatic are doing right here. You'll see, they just lost the round to it, and they, they still are not sure they're just getting fired at. They're going down! All of Meister, they have no idea! This is gonna be frustration on a whole new level. Pronax taking another kill down here, and it's happy alone in a one on four and he's... UPs, we don't see the Molotovs either, so they are a little bit limited in how, uh, how elaborate they can execute here in the 20th round. Auto Sniper picked up on the Lovemeister, and now I'm just wondering, I'm just yeah. wondering, is this going to be the case? Is he going to try and shoot through, or is he just going to look down there? All right. It's right. happening again. It's happening again. But let's see. I mean, do they give it away? Do they use it here? I mean, the, the, he, he hasn't even shown that he can use it towards top of mid like this. Fnatic, I mean, LDS, he could run right oh. through here. They may have never... Wait, are they jumping around trying to check? No, I think he's just jumping. There it is. <laughs> he's raining down death from above. He's essentially just a god picking people out. Look at this field of view. He might as well be. There is no hope anymore. Olafmeister, once again, going to be put up here. Is he fast enough, however, to stop this? Is he going to spot them? Yes, he does. And they know exactly what's happening. The rush coming in from LDLC, speeding up towards this B site. And this is all about the plan here for LDLC. Can they get the job done? 
Even the information to know that there's rushes happening is so good. Nice return kills though from LDNC in fact, but Olof Meister's there, Auto Sniper in hand, and Flusher will pick up the final kill. This is just all Olof Meister, he's just, he's forcing them back into this game. With this boost, he's up at 14 kills. Round for round, he's just, he's killing LDLC members and then grounding them into a found powder and using that to just pave the ways, you know, into an asphalt made of dead LDLC members. Wow. I love, love, love that clip, right? It's, it's so OP. A, a fanatic was <laughs> down so much. And then that boost whatever, how many times, like three, four times in a row, brought them back in the game, and Fnatic ended up, I think, beating them over they that. Won. And it was just, it was just, it was so OP. It was so broken. I feel, I kind of feel bad for LDLC in because it's just, it's, it's, it's one of those where you have sticks and they have guns, literally, <laughs> and you have no idea right. what's going on, what, how to deal with it, where is it coming from, you know, it, it was just as such, I'd be so salty if it was LDLC. That's the way I go out is like that to boost. Yeah. I'd be so salty. That, clip, that clip is like everything about it is so nostalgic. Like the fact that the quality is low, the, the audio is a little janky too. It sounds as old. It's only four years old, but it sounds much older than it is. A and, lifetime. In yeah, lifetime. Yeah, and CS, right? But you're watching it, and yeah, you don't. They don't know where it's. It's. It's like you're witnessing like a real live like m sniper murder massacre going on, like based off the commentary. Plus, what's happening in the game? <laughs> it's 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 incredible to watch. Yeah, it's definitely one of those moments. And I think after that, they had to nerf it. They had to put skyboxes and stuff so people can't do that. It's just too right. broken. It's too. Yeah. You can see the crazy. entire map from that one spot. They knew where they're going. I'm surprised. Um, actually, well, actually, I don't know. It's not really a bug, but you know there are rules in the tournaments that you can't abuse bugs. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. That's kind of a gray area. It's a boost, but you're looking over the entire map. So is that you got the god bug? Is it the map? Ball? Yeah. It's just I don't know. I mean, I can't call it a bug, but it felt like a bug pretty ridiculous yeah they they lost the they forfeited the match after that they had to so they so i believe <laughs> ldlc ended up winning i don't know or they maybe did a rematch i forget between them and like the second place team or third place it's been a long time i don't it's, remember it has anymore. been a while but they did they did I have just to remember forfeit the, boost. the match i just remember that. the boost everyone that's what everyone that. just remembers the boost specifically <laughs> i don't even remember what happened all i just yeah. know that fanatic should have lost but they pulled that out of their asses yeah crazy crazy times back then um we also have uh, a tournament coming up which is we have actually a few of them but uh there is dreamhack winter right a hundred thousand mm. dollars uh starting mm. tomorrow in jeez i don't know if i could pronounce this i'm gonna try uh okay juan juan kunping juan kunping juan it sounds more it sounds, sounds something German. more oriental than Swedish. It's is it supposed to be Swedish? It's it's, it's, it's a Swedish town, Hong Kong Ping. Hong Kong Ping. Hong Kong. I, I sound like I'm speaking <laughs> Mandarin here, but it's it can't be. That's what it's not what it sounds like. I don't think. But it can't be. Oh, well, <laughs> I know if I hear it, I'm like, wow, it's way off. I can spell. Yeah, it I'm pretty for sure you. I heard it. Yeah, I'll spell it for you, which is J uh, O with two dots above it. And no, I'm kidding. But what's that called? <laughs> I don't what's know. The, what's the O with two dots called? We I'm don't know sure. this stuff. We have a we have an I <laughs> with a, a sideways squiggly. <laughs> I think I'm I know. Sure. Um, oh, wait, oh, it's called an umlaut. Umlaut. Uh, the, the, the two. The, the, I like that. No, well, the two dots above it's called umlaut. Okay, umlaut. I mean, that sounds yeah. weirdly fitting. I don't know why, but it sounds appropriate. Right? Knows o with diarists. I don't know, man. We're getting we're overstepping our boundary here. Yeah. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna make back. ourselves look really dumb now. We're gonna <laughs> make ourselves look real dumb on the internet. Let's step back. Stick to English. Let's That's what we're it. good at. Let's do it. Sometimes. I I, I no make more, myself look bad no enough. More no more O's with two dots on the on top of it. So But 
Back anyway, to it. Back to the squads. Uh, it's a pretty interesting blend of teams. If we could pull up the groups right now, we'll have a look and see who's playing. Sort of that like mid-tier bracket. Um, yeah, a lot of tier two, tier, I guess, tier three teams. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Let's just say all tier two. Yeah, for um, the sake. For the sake of it. Uh, so it's, you know, honestly, this could go either way. Ence is kind of on a down hill lately um they're doing really well in the middle of the year and then they kind of just fell off optic they've been doing better and better uh but i i'm really excited for team ldlc uh just to see how how they do against teams like this um uh, i think there has a lot of potential and can do really well you also see complexity up there the the soul north american team right they they were, I mean, they, did, they had a phenomenal run at the major, but as, as you know, the news and gossip's been kind of circulating, I think you, you mentioned this last week, com- or two weeks ago, Complexity is looking for possible roster movements or extra players, so I'm not sure what angle they're going to go for, like who they're going to replace or, right. you know, like who are they going to pick up? And so that can't be too good on the minds of the team itself of complexity. You know, you, you got top eight at a major and yep. you're already looking for roster replacements. So it's, uh, ugh, it doesn't look too good right now in the complexity camp, but you never know. I mean, they, they've showed that they could beat good teams. So, and you know, some of these teams are very beatable. You know, Hero just came off a win, off of God, what was that tournament? It was, it was like last week. It was some, it was some, some random tournament. Yeah, I saw. That was I'm with, not sure the with name lots of money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they can't remember off the top of my head. I think it was Asia, somewhere in Asia. It was like Toyota Cup, I believe yeah. it was. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Toyota Cup was mm-hmm. it? So I they just so. came off winning that. So they got some confidence. They're thinking, hey, let's win two in a row. So they have a pretty good chance of doing a, a pretty good. Existence Galaxy, they've been kind of uh, popping up here and there. They haven't done anything too north, you know, noteworthy yet, but they've been, been been pretty consistent on showing up at these tier two events, tier three events, and so uh, doing kind of well online as well. So we'll see if uh, these guys can do really well on LAN uh, coming up. Yeah, I don't, see for the other teams. Yeah, I don't know too much about existence. I think heroic. Uh, Definitely is a strong contender here, but I'm with you. I'm excited to see Team LDLC play. Um, like I said, like we were going over earlier, they played really, really well at Chicago. Uh, beat Renegades, North, NRG, and they were they almost beat Liquid um, and, yeah. and advanced to playoffs instead of them, which would have been just a crazy tale. Um, and they're ranked number mm-hmm. 12 in the world right now. Um, so this team has certainly has the potential to go ahead and win this game. <coughs> Excuse me. Complexity. Yeah, I mean, they had that amazing run through the major, made it to the playoffs, but uh, they since seem to have, like, fell off a bit since then, right? They had a pretty poor yeah. showing at DreamHack Atlanta, um, weren't able to do much there. Um, but you f- would think that if they can be on the upswing after that, if that's possible, that this is a tournament they can do some damage in. Yeah, Um for sure. Even though they haven't done well, the teams that they lost to is, you know, you can't really fault them too much. I mean, they lost to Vitality, who yeah. won um, DreamHack Atlanta. So that's, it's, it's only two to one. So they did, they did take a map off Vitality. They almost, well, not almost beat, but they lost to MIBR 16 to 12, which, eh, it's in the pro league before that. So, it, I mean, they, they come, Kind of close. Uh, they can beat teams like Liquid, um, but they also lose. They also lose to teams like Renegades, who's been kind of up and up. Mm-hmm. They lose to a team like a Rogue or E United, or even a Space Station. Lost to Space Station, and so mm-hmm. uh, Complexity definitely have some consistency issues uh, on the team. So I'm wondering if uh, that's what the roster placement has to do. Maybe bring someone a little more consistent, uh, so they're so they don't have all these random uh, results in these tournaments yeah yeah they possibly could 
could use a roster change or something, just some kind of like mentality boost, something, something for this squad. Something, I don't know something. what it is. It's got to be something. You have to, you don't know until you work with them and you live with them and you practice with them every day. You smell yeah, I, them. I see, I smell them, what they eat. You, you've been eating tacos five days in a row. What's wrong, eh? What is wrong? You keep eating these tacos. Stop it. Change up your diet a little bit. Um, I don't know. It's just something, you know. You, you just don't know from outside perspective. Yeah. So we just have to wait and see and see what complex will do. I'm on board with the with the, the concept or notion that if you're if you're physically feeling good, that you are gonna play better in Counter Strike or oh, whichever esport it is. Hundred percent. I mean, look diet at Team has Liquid. Do with it. Oh look yeah, at look Liquid. at Team Liquid. All the players are jacked. You might not see it with their jerseys, but they're mm -hmm. all jacked. They're all they all look like they're eating well. They look like they work out consistently. Even Zeus, you know, he was on the bigger side, but now he's looking a lot skinnier. Yeah. He's looking fit. Uh, it's the, the the physical plays a huge role in, in you know how you play. And you know, I guess another example is from Team Milk is Twist. He's been having actually a lot of problems with his stomach. And it's been mm -hmm. affecting his play. Yeah, that's imagine. a physical aspect, you know, that's affecting his his play style. So, you know, if you have other teammates or other teams that are getting healthier mentally and physically, it will definitely carry on in your game. And you know, every time you practice, you feel better. Uh, you know, it just you always want to feel the best you can when you play, so you don't develop bad habits or drag your team down, or yeah. just you know, you, you don't want to be a poison that just slowly kills your team. Yeah, and I mean, just the, just the nature of playing video games professionally and those grueling hours of sitting, God, it's got to, you know, that you got to be doing something to combat that because if you're feeling like yeah. junk and you are expected to practice for six, eight hours, you'll feel way worse after that. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, right now that you well, mention it, those guys, I mean, Nitro, looking a little brolic, I'm not going to lie. Taco, yeah, on the other hand, like... I, I feel like I could take Taco on. Don't tell I mean, so <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I mean, he could be one of those uh, those small guys that could hit really hard. You never know. He probably he's knows jujitsu. He's, he's a nimbly, yeah, jujitsu as well. <laughs> coming from Brazil, so and you know he has an army of people behind him. So you true. take him out, you can get taken out by his army. Mm, army of fans and followers. Yeah, I didn't consider the mafia. <laughs> in this. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Um. Yeah, uh, we also have. Where were we? Are we? I forgot. We're part of. The we show. were uh, Dreamhack winner. Dreamhack. There we go. Dreamhack winner. Talk a little bit about Group A. Mm -hmm. uh, group B you got Bravado, who the name is very familiar, but I've I've seen him win matches, but I've never watched them play. So this will be interesting to see this South African team compete and um, looking at their past matches. They did okay. I mean, they lost to Swole Patrol. Uh, they haven't really beat any notable teams except for Rogue. This is back in mm, Dreamhack right. Open Winter, back in October. It's the only really notable team that I've seen them beat. So uh, we'll see on land, see if it's any different. Yeah. You never know, right? Rogue made a change than, recently as well, didn't they? Like two weeks ago? I remember we went over something like that. I can't remember what it was. Oh, God. So, uh, they they changed out, um, Cadian was their IGL. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And oh, they, and they brought MSL. Yeah, MSL was the guy, and so they've been kind of doing okay, not really getting better or not getting really worse either. So we'll see if they be able to ramp up in this next month or two and really just pack on MSL's play style and it'll help them out and and whatnot. But. Um, you know, you got Ents, we mentioned a little bit earlier. They had, you know, they were doing pretty well around the London major time. Uh, and then kind of performing more. Then they kind of dropped off a little bit. So let's see if they will be refired, revamped up. Uh, you got Sergey J mm -hmm. or Serge J or whatever on the team who's been a lot of eyes. A lot of people been looking at him yeah. as, you know, the next big thing coming from Finland. Been playing extremely well, a lot of kills. He's a fragger, and so that's always a good thing to see. Yeah. 
a G two. They've been oh goodness, they've we been a talk. mess. We don't have to talk about that. They've been they've been an absolute <laughs> mess. Yeah. Uh, they just well, I mean, it's good to talk about because they just added two new players to the team, Jax yeah. and Lucky from Three D Max. And personally, I think I've seen one match of Three D Max, and so I I can't really comment or I don't want to say if they're a good fit or not because I don't want to you know say something that I completely don't know. So I, I think you know it's, it's interesting. A lot of a lot of weird talks about why they picked these guys up. You know they had a chance with Zaiwu earlier and whatnot. So G two kind of trying to pick up the pieces where they left off, trying to still make this work. With Shocks and Kenny S. Yeah, uh, body has been kind of sitting back. He hasn't been doing too well. Whether it's because of the you know previous G two system or what's mm. you know what's happening. But it'll definitely be interesting to see how Jax and Lucky will fit in. They'll definitely have a chip on their shoulder. They would want to play. I, you know, I could see them playing really well coming out just because of the fact that they have to prove themselves. Usually people play a little better uh, when they do that kind of thing. Yeah, G2 got, like, shattered mentally um, yeah, with all those been, roster they changes. Been doing like, well. Straight up C4 in the, in the team house, it felt like. Um, yeah, it's it's not going too well for them uh, lately. So they had to make a roster change. They got rid of Smiths and Existence, which is kind of weird. To get rid of Existence because you know he was the in-game leader. Um, he made strats. He was helping. You know, he was he was he got hired for the team to really change the team in in, in more of a I guess strategy way, but it. it it didn't work out. G two didn't give him enough time or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it just it didn't didn't do it much for the team, so they got rid of him. Yeah, with the new roster changes, it's good to see. You know, maybe they can get back in the forum, and this will be kind of that first uh, tell or showing of that. <clears throat> mm-hmm. uh, as we like really get ready to wrap things up, we have what is probably the most anticipated tournament in the next couple of weeks happening starting on december 4th is the esl pro league finals we talked about this a little mm. bit uh it's december mm. 4th through the 9th it's in odinese denmark um seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar prize pool and that's, uh, that's a large sum of money you could buy uh, cars and houses and things like that nature uh mm. astralis <laughs> which is on my mind is astralis is going to be there and they have a shot. If they win this, they will secure the Intel Grand Slam. Uh, and with that, the prize of a million dollars on top of that. So these guys could be bringing home about 1.75 mil in the instance they win. And it'll be in Denmark, their home country. Could you That's even fair. fathom? Could you even That's fathom? Fair. Is this their tournament or what? <laughs> I don't know. A I'm writing it off. I'm this. scripting it as uh, Strauss's win. I mean, you never know, right? They are definitely, they want the Grand Slam. It's their year to do it. They've been on a hot streak. They cannot lose, it seems like. But again, there's a lot of good teams here, especially from North America. So I actually like the chance from North America. I think overall, North America might do a little, well, actually, I don't know. They're like all stacked in Group B, which is kind of upsetting. Yeah, Group B is a death squad. Yeah, it's going to be very tough. But, you know, you have Ghost, MIBR, mm-hmm. NRG, you got Liquid. So it's a lot of good, solid North American teams. And I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing Ghost playing well, you know. Uh, Definitely. They are, you know, they just joined the league and they're already in playoffs, which is very rare indeed. And usually if you just join the league, you get pounded on and you end up getting body. second or last place. Yeah, so body. And, and also, not to mention, there's two Latin American teams, um, Sharks, which is with the old school player Knack. Uh, I talk to him every once in a great while. You know, he was on the old, old MIBR, like way back with, oh God, what's, what was his name? Um, uh, who's the opera? It's on tip my tongue, but it was, it was, it was the most famous. Brazilian opera at the time, way back mm-hmm. in MIBR, Kogu, Kogu, that's Kogu. who it was. Okay. Um, and so it'd be interesting to see how they'll do. And then you have Ince with Kane, Kane G's coming back. He's going to be at this term. Kane G, Phelps. So this is gonna it's going to be kind of 
It's always going to be see, okay, yeah. these guys haven't been in the limelight for about a year. Let's see how they do on land because KNG, very, very good on land. He's, 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 a, he's a land player. He brings it to the game when he needs to be. And so it's, he, I guess it's, it's going to be very interesting in terms for the North America. I think North America has a really good shot. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, geez, it would be, I mean, I'll start with Ghost Gaming. It would be absolutely amazing to see Ghost win this tournament. I don't know if it's possible, but I know that James uh, McCulley, which now I got the pronunciation of his last name right. Uh, there you is, go. You know, <laughs> d- d- toasted me when I, <laughs> when I did it, pronounced it wrong at the show when he was there two weeks ago. Uh, but I sat down and talked to them at DreamHack Atlanta, which they were playing quite well at. I thought they actually had a shot at at um at winning that tournament um but we talked about he told me a little bit about his coaching philosophy and he's a hard-working guy so like i think that goes yeah, he's a very hard worker oh absolutely he's got a good sense of the game um and it seems like from talking to him that he's he's like in a way like i want to say like playful or gentle with his players like he's very he talked to me a lot about like emotional management of those guys and making sure they're not uh down on themselves or emo as he tends to say and his verbiage, but he's also very stern in terms of making sure that the guys are sticking to what they the the practice plans and routes they need to take to to prepare themselves for each match and tournament. Um, so seeing that moving forward is going to be exciting. Um, if we look at the groups right now, we can get a kind of a better idea of who's going to playing who because I totally forgot off the top of my head. Uh, but yeah, here's Group A. As you can see, pretty. Uh, I mean, light comparatively to Group B, right? Um, definitely a lot of interesting teams, like you said, like Liquid. I really want to see Liquid do something here. I've been waiting forever for them to kind of take that plunge and, and just win a major tournament. Um, but Astralis, man, it's going to be tough. Let's take a quick look at Group B as well here. Yeah, yeah. So this is the Death Squad. I mean, MIBR, Energy North, uh, Energy looking really good. Ghost, of course, Mouse, back on the come up. And Navi, and Navi is, I feel like, obviously I've been a little out of the loop the last two weeks with um, the events happening and holidays and whatnot, but I feel like I haven't found myself saying Navi, the name, very often in a while. Navi Navi has been kind of... um is how do you say kind of fell off a little bit after the tournament win yeah um in a you know a couple months ago was it blast copenhagen was one right of their yeah yeah they won. last wins and mm-hmm. kind of bombed out in last couple to, or last tournament um after that um they got pretty much stomped out by big and at iem so they got and trashed. they also lost at, and they also lost to E United pretty bad, like really, like sixteen six. Yeah, E United, e United knocked them out of the tournament at Chicago. And dazzle top frag. What do you know? <laughs> you, but, you know, I you can't, can't just believe that. that. No, you can't yeah. really. But I mean, still, and it was a it was a best of one, correct? Against E United, yeah. But that, but that uh, knocked yeah, them out it was of the best tournament. Of one. They, uh, we yeah, were there. We were we were there doing some coverage and uh, Navi just left. They dipped right out after that. No, they don't they want got to talk to anybody, to and I don't blame them. And, and you know, it, even look at the matches against Big. Um, it was kind of close, but it just it kind of shows you that the system for Navi can't be that great when you have to sacrifice so much to feed electronic and simple yeah i mean yeah simple's an amazing player you want him to be in those fragging positions but you won't be able to as i say you won't be able to win many tournaments they've had one tournaments but it, it seems like it's not efficient play style that you have to rely on these people like electronic and simple headshot and everyone all the time their aim will not be on all the time sometimes people are going to have good aim days sometimes bad yeah sometimes some other person is going to have, you know, out shooting simple. It's rare, but it happens. And then yeah. when it does, you have to have a plan to where you can work around that. You're not relying on him killing three people around. It's just, it won't work in the long run. So it's, uh, it's some that I hope they can eventually figure out, have a little bit better system where they're just not completely betting over backwards for a, a simple. Even though he's the best 
one of the best players in the world. You just it's a team game. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's right. You're only as strong as the weakest link. That's an old mm, one. Wise words. Yeah, wise words. it's there so it's go. very true though. It's very true. I remember hearing that for like my whole life as like a kid, a boy, a young lad. Oh, I just never re understood it. I never really understood it, but it's so true. If you have a weak, you know, weak player in your squad, or and not necessarily even to, to say that Navi really does. I mean, comparatively to simple maybe, but it just it's the core you know it's like taking out a leg at a table it falls down pretty quickly yep. after that yep. four of those guys yeah. in this case five <laughs> <laughs> pretty much for them okay real fast before we wrap this up if you had to pin that a one winner one uno winner for this event ESL pro league who's your money on how can you go against astralis like how can you go against astralis you know yeah. what? I'm going to go against Astralis. I'm going to pick. This would be so dumb. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick MIBR to win. Ooh, that would be that would be going great to see. I'm going. I'm going with MIBR. Wow. I think they're going to have revenge. I think if they if they meet Astralis in the finals, it's going to be revenge. Uh, but Jamie Barry is going to play so well. They're going to be so ridiculously crazy. That Astralis won't know what hit them. That's what I'm predicting. Let's go. I like that. Yeah. It might be they're, they're training. They're probably in the gym. You know, hitting like bags, sandbags with Dupree Dupree's face on it. Mm. Zip it. <laughs> <laughs> That's just, how I'd be training. Just focus. Yeah. yeah. Just, just, <laughs> mm. Mm. Mm, yeah, they got chips. A, yeah, yeah, they gotta have a chip on their shoulder after that, after um, e ECS for sure. If for me, um, what about you? Yeah, like I'm with you that it's like anytime you say anything against Astralis, you basically Sounds not only do you stupid. sound like an idiot, you feel like an idiot <laughs> saying it. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that good? Um, but Jesus, I but I'm a believer. I mean, just right? go with it. You know what you. You picked Astralis early. You felt it in in Odense. Go with your heart. Based Go off heart. the narrative, the script, the Intel Grand Slam, the caliber, the, the just the feeling of seeing them winning this in in Denmark on their home turf with with the home field advantage, everything considered, I have to go Astralis. With that being said, yeah, I yeah. think MIBR or I don't think Liquid, but any other team winning this event and taking that away from them would also be equally as as oh. awesome. Oh, it, it's going to be, be... Israel's would feel so terrible. Yeah, and the team that beats them would feel so good. Just watch out, watch out for the team that beats Astralis at this tournament. Watch for the next six yeah. months how they would probably rise. You know dramatically in terms of ranks because of just the confidence it's going to bring you for beating a, a high caliber team like that you know all it takes is one little spark to you know shoot off that momentum yeah uh, you know in the future that's all it takes hey it's and mental. that's it's a it is and it's it's a lot of pressure for astralis too and i mean like 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 that's ever bothered them right it seems like but i mean this one is it's almost too sweet to imagine it it really is you know what i mean all yeah, things considered yeah. it's it's gonna be a fun tournament to watch i'm yeah. like, really excited to see it absolutely so that one's kicking off on december 4th do not miss it and that's basically gonna wrap our esl pro league but before we go really really fast we're gonna go to our banter of the week if, so Ooh. i gotta ask you have you heard of this game, Artifact? Have you heard of this? It's a new game by, by Valve. I've been playing a lot of beta. I've been playing no a lot of the beta. Oh, my God. How is it? Yeah, I'm, I'm, it, was, it was fun. Um, but I'll see when I play more of it because it's a new game. It's fresh. You know, I kind of like Hearthstone. I used to like Hearthstone or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I like card games and stuff. So it was really fun playing Artifact because I – grasp the game a lot quicker than a lot of these people that are playing in beta so i felt yep. really good <laughs> i uh -huh. felt really good but obviously I, I, I don't play any of the the card game pro players you know from magic the gathering or hearthstone so yeah. it's very interesting to see how it has a lot of different strategies so i'm excited 
I haven't I haven't played it myself, but to my understanding, it's a it's a Dota. It's based off Dota, right? A Dota yep. card game. Okay, based that's interesting. And they're it's based off Dota game. Yeah. Okay, and they're um, they're it's an aspiring esport, right? Just like every other game that's developing developed today in this era is aspiring to be this esport <laughs> for you know all the obvious reasons. Um, but also Valve. I don't know if you saw this, but uh, Valve made this like they they built this like elaborate box that that they made where you pushed a button and it, I think if I'm getting this correct it would release the game on the Steam market. Have you seen this? No, I haven't. You seen have that. not. Okay, let, let's bring I've never let's bring seen this. this, this. So this is this insane box that they <laughs> made with keys and levers. What? Is this real? This is real. This is real and oh. apparently when they hit the red button it it launched it, it basically was like hitting enter on a keyboard and launched that game artifact into the steam wow. library but if you look at the comment underneath from the csgo developer he writes for every like this <laughs> tweet gets we had one day <laughs> and uh, i can't I'm squinting now but i think it's a, that's around five thousand or so likes that they've there gotten. we go or no that there one actually has seven thousand yeah so. yeah i don't crazy they just uh, the csgo valve has been memeing lately they've been finally jumping on the social media and trying to Bandwagon. stay relevant by throwing names out there let's throw that's some good. cat pictures and memes that's what people like dude memes around dude. the world I, I hate to say like i hate to admit it like I, I enjoy them i enjoy seeing them but like now like doing a bit of marketing on my own and stuff like the memes it's memes they Literally kill memes. it it's so they good. Kill it. They they rule the world. <laughs> like, they do. They do. It's disgusting. You're a meme. You're you're immortalized forever. <laughs> True. Your, your story, your legacy will live on forever. As a meme. <laughs> Bears, thank you so much for coming on the show. As thank always, you. my man. Appreciate it. Appreciate hey. Cody. Thank Appreciate you guys you. for having me on. I'll see you soon. All right. Have a good day. Have, Have a wonderful you. day. You too, my man. We'll talk to you soon. Watch out for the ESL Pro League. Mm-mm-mm-mm. <laughs> uh, and that's Bears. Thanks to Bears, as always, for coming on the show. Always appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching the Reload. We hope you enjoy. We're always trying to bolster the show in any possible way we can, bring you the best Counter-Strike news. Uh, weekly this is our time, Thursday at 2 p.m., bringing you the best of the best of competitive Counter-Strike. My name is Cody Luongo from the UGC studios and I will see you next week.